Hey everyone, this is Good Names, and welcome to Velation Ice, finally, and consistently, hopefully. <laughs> so, this is going to be an actual launch that I have done and am now doing in post-commentary. Not actually going to be using this one, just a test run. So, in this launch, it's a very, very slow launch. I'm glad I wasn't even doing this on Kerbin. Hey, there's so much, it's five tenths? No, five, four fifths, there we go. Four fifths the gravity of Kerbin, so this rocket probably would not be able to lift off from there. Luckily, I was on lathe, and oh no, just luck. Everything in this video is practically luck. A lot of the maneuvers and whatnot. Some skill, but mainly luck. So, because launches have been done so often, because it's KSP, come on. I'm going to be speeding through this at three times the pace. So what this rocket is made up of is a triple launch stage, I guess. Not really official launch stage, because I just slap all this stuff together. But it has three outside skippers, there we go. Three outside skippers with that engine setup, that fuel setup that you can see there, all tied in so they feed into the middle rocket. Now the middle rocket is also a skipper. I'm not sure if these things really should be used. I've gone on and done another launch, not for relation ice, but using a mixture between skippers and Rockamax main sails, where the main sails drop off first, just to get it out of the thin atmosphere. And it seems like it works better. But onto the payload. The payload consists of this giant compressed satellite dish, satellite dish almost. It's the basic surveyor for planetary and lunar rough estimates. You can actually key it in to figure out where the majority of the ore is and whatnot. I have tested it out on lathe and Val, which comes into conflict later when I try and use the whole testing mechanism. Because I already tested Val once in the save, because I was testing out how these things, are, things actually work, it didn't actually go through the whole testing process, but that practically means that you need energy and I had plenty of that on this craft. I realized that I only had two generators on the previous craft that I was just testing this stuff out with and it didn't it would stop, charge up, transfer some more data because I was trying to still get back to lay I mean Kerbin, even though technically we are supposed to be based out of lathe. Yay reasons. Well it's a game and we're practically chopping it up into little pieces and then playing it! Yay! Cinematography and storytelling in a video game. Very interesting stuff at that. So, we've made it through around, la around lathe, but right now I'm going to be testing to make sure, using hyperedit, to figure out where exactly the lathe atmosphere is. I haven't modified the atmosphere, I just wanted to make sure that I was out of it before I started doing this time warp. And now, going back into another mod which I'll be using for slow motion. Sadly, it doesn't also work with uh, the camera control mod, but it works nonetheless to help you speed up to windows. Now I actually overshoot this window to get to Val, which I've learned is pretty easy. Because I actually exit Val's orbit and then come back in on top of it. It does kind of help because I'm farther out and the speed is so great. I guess that's not really an advantage. Yeah. I really haven't done much of this stuff, even though I've played KSP ever since I could walk. No. Like, two years? One? Yeah, probably two years by now. Just never really got into doing all these interplanetary, interlunar, intermooner orbits. I really want to know if lunar just means the moon, as in real life moon, not mun, but, or just celestial body around another planet. Because this is really the lunar system, not Jewel. It is so, so many moons of it, like Jupiter, that it's literally a lunar system because you can't really land on a gas giant, you can simply well, orbit it and use it as a giant break. Aero breaking its funness. Also one thing with having uh, done the surveying, Lathe gets this really weird hue on it every once in a while, which I think I ran into when I was launching and just then when we were in map view. 
but it's something natural with the game that it tries to put an overlay around it and because there's nothing as the overlay, overlay it just says white. And now we're getting to the point where I intercept the orbits but we are so off. We are so out of pace that I need to go outside of Val's orbit to actually slow down enough to fall on top of it. So that means I need to bring back my window which I'll be using in more of these Blation Ice videos. Luckily I don't have to spend much more fuel until I get an encounter, but I guess it all works out. Luck is everything in this. So one stupid thing in creating this craft is I didn't actually put on SAS or the rotary gears which help you turn, so I only can turn when I have the engines run running. At least I have them gimbling, so that's nice. So now we've reached a relation orbit. This is kind of going in fast because I had to go outside of its orbit and then come back in. I had to do the loop-de-loop, -loop, crossing over and coming back. But our apoaps, our periaps, is pretty high off, so we also need to get into a polar orbit, expanding the launch stage, or the interlunar stage, interlunar <sighs> reasons, interstage of sorts there. Now I'm setting up my maneuvers. This actually works out quite nicely, don't have to gimbal around, manage this on my first shot because of the advanced SAS stuff. This stuff is so fun when you turn on SAS, that top right one works so nicely once you get a proper maneuver going. There I'm burning with my engine to get into the correct alignment because I don't have any of those gears. And finally, everything is coming together in this one burn. Which, magic as it is science, comes into play and we get a nice polar orbit. Connects up and that's it. So this is pretty late in night when I'm actually doing this, so I call it a night and try and get into a later in a better orbit later. So this is the next day. I pull open the dish of sorts, the research vessel, I guess, maybe, and start the recording. I mean the whatever, pulling out the solar panels, thinking that it will actually send information this time, but because I already got it, it works magically. It's so instantaneous that that it's magic science. It's a magic. Science and magic. Coexisting. Imagine that. Imagine that. Wow. It's late. So, what this thing does, what I believe it's to do, is that it only works at such a low altitude that I would have to the orbit a bit because that one end that we are at the apoapsis right now is way too high I thought but magic that it works so that is Val with the rough estimates of ore or being the magic stuff that you do everything with and that's the whole reason relation ice is going to Val as in the name so what I'm going through here is the settings on the sensor toning it down to only get the highest quantity of ore this is actually located, oh, I want to say the highlands, it's pretty random with Val. On lathe it is mainly located on the highlands, but that's mainly using the smaller sensor, which I'll be using in the next launch to Val, for Relation Ice. So that's what you can look forward to, the, to in the next video, and by then I'll have a launch site set up, I mean a landing site set up, or a few places I want to test going into couple maps and figuring out what would be nice and flat Because you don't want to be landing on a hillside Which we might actually end up to based off of what lathe has shown that hills are more or ore intensive We need to get our biggest bang for a buck, but then again since we're mining ore, we can always easily relocate this place So that's about it for this video a couple things that have come up in the press is we have an absolutely new, brand new member to the press. For the win, I so want to change his name to something, something he doesn't even introduce with his name. Ah, throwing things out there. Find a name for the wind, G4 M3RS. Gamers with numbers in there. Ah, I just know that. Uh, FTW? FTW. For the win. Yes, that's it. For the win. 
Gamers has joined the Spirit Wolf Press and is building up for his own war series, maybe a dark multiplayer series, but things are still to come with him. Also with Legends 2, there we go, we're going to be doing some uh, vignettes, there we go, between the press where I practically hand off all the reins to One Way Gaming and also Squiddy on two of these small vignettes that will be taking place during Legends 2. But one thing that one has asked for is guns mods because well no spoilers but he's I guess he's going to need to use guns for it so there will be guns used in that vignette and then a couple more episodes to keep continuity but all the rest of it will be stock all except for that one attack which really needs guns because we're reusing that craft and we don't want to overload it with parts and whatnot so Look forward to that one mod change. I really don't want to keep adding mods in. As you can see, they were actually useful in this episode. So, give or take, it adds, subtracts. Removes from the vanilla-ness of Macy Dean, sadly. But, it's all the press. You're gonna find something somewhere. One really started off the modding in it. So, as me from the press and everyone else, I'll see you in the next one.